Is this the ones with wood in them? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's wood. Canned heat. I wonder if that's the one with timers. That's a crazy film. You've seen that film? No. Man, it's just the hardest thing to watch. It's just insane. Keep on walking, keep on walking. <laughs> incredible um, archive um, and something that you could uh, spend the rest of your life. We have yeah. to stop you. Yeah. <laughs> I think we would have to start with Public Enemy. Um, Public Enemy number one, I think, is, uh, is as good as it gets. What goes on? What goes on? I think Public Enemy was the first band that actually kind of made me realise that, you know, um, some people uh, had, you know, maybe The Clash, um, other people had, you know, uh, Sex Pistols. Um, but I suppose you would say with a kind of like a punk ethic and something mm -hmm. more than just music for enjoyment. It was a it was a political social political message, and and it was menacing. It was kind of you know, uh, like I said, you know, you get these pivotal kind of moments in your life where a record affects you, mm -hmm. and you just all of a sudden you just kind of go, this is something else. Music. Yeah. This is just not like radio music. What do you want to listen to next? Can uh, can well yeah. It was I was working in London. Uh, on the first Porter's Head album in 1991, and um, we moved into her house. I think Marky Smith was being interviewed on Radio One, mm -hmm. and I uh, could hear this music in the kitchen. I was like, "What? What is this?" We kind of like turned it up, and it was like, "Oh my God, what is this band? What is this band?" And um, we put in a cassette straight away. It's like push record, and I honestly thought that they were a new band, um, and, you know, and I just thought, wow, this is like, it's, you know, it's the beat from Public Enemy or a tribe called Quest Loop or something like that, played by a drummer, obviously, because the drums change all the time, and then this guy singing these melodies over the top. It's just like, oh, what is that? And then we listened to it afterwards, and Marky Smith went, oh, that was Can, you know. And it was like, okay, Can, is that the name of the track, the band, or whatever? <laughs> Which song? Oh, Drop the Needle Anywhere. Okay. I think they're, they're my favourite band, basically, in the last ten years. It's uh, un un unforgiving, experimental, melodic, beautiful, um, uh, tasteful. Uh, it's all the things I love about music, basically. If it reminds you of anything, ah, man. want to play it? Ah, wow. Wow. Yes. <laughs> I know a fat old policeman. He's always on our street. A fat and jolly red-faced man. He really is a treat. He's too kind for a policeman. He's never known to frown. And everybody says he is the happiest man in town. <laughs> It's my earliest memory of music, possibly one of my first childhood memories. 
I lived uh, in a village, a small village, just outside of Porter's Head, and um, it had a village shop. And um, this, that laughter was coming from a box of cornflakes, because mm -hmm. the radio was behind the cornflakes. And it freaked me out. And I was like, <laughs> what the f is that, you know? Um, and uh, it's kind of stayed with me. Oh, well, of, of course. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's it's a well-trodden path by every English man that comes to Paris to play Serge Gainsbourg. Les ailes de la Rolle s'effleuraient des pylônes. We, uh, Porter Z, uh, first played um, uh, Transmusicale in 95, maybe. And I think there was a, a Paris DJ called Moogly, maybe. He gave us a copy of, of that record. He said, oh, you, you would enjoy this record. And he was right. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's just, uh, I cannot speak French, so he, I do not know what he's talking about. Just the, mo just the mood, the playing of the musicians is just insanely brilliant. The way that they work together, you know, that use dynamics in such a huge way. You just don't get records like that anymore. Um, this one? Oh, no. No? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> no, no, because I'd, the reason I would like to do that one is because the producer, Johnny Dollar, um, died. Okay. Um, a, uh, two, year, two, three years ago, uh, this month, um, he was a friend of mine, um, and he produced and wrote a lot of the first mm -hmm. Massive Attack record. I was on the session uh, as a tape op, um, making tea and sandwiches for the mm -hmm. band. I was never allowed in the studio, really. <laughs> um, so I had absolutely no influence on that record. Uh, you kind of, I knew that it was a really special record when they were recording it. You know, it was everything I liked about music. And uh, Johnny Donald was an amazing engineer and producer. Um, and uh, I suppose I learned an awful lot from him. But um, I think he brought the, the, a lot of the melancholiness to that album. Mm -hmm. it's, it's an important record because uh, I lost a friend, really. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go for the, the most obvious. It's just a, a seminal uh, piece of music. Um, I didn't really know about scratching when I first heard that. I just kind of thought, and then obviously with the video, um, it's, it's such an iconic kind of uh, the legs and the, and the television and the, it just puts you back in that time. And suppose, I mean, you know, I was just a terrible, really terrible break dancer it kind of helped me move to music. <laughs> I was never going to make it as a professional street dancer. So um, the craziest thing about it was that it stopped, almost stopped inner town violence because people would have dance-offs instead. We, Porter Z, the town, used to fight with Clevedon and Pill and Nelsey, all these different little towns around. We used to have big fights with them all the time. And then breakdancing come in, and the fighting stopped, and everyone used to dance. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous, but it's amazing. I, who'd have thought? You know, who'd have thunk? But um, so uh, yeah, it's it's got really massive fond memories. This is all kind of sample stuff from the 
a long time ago. A mad villain. Dripping off the beat, kinda dripping off the meat grinder. Heat niner, pimping, stripping, soft, sweet miner. China was a neat sign of trouble with the script digits. Double dip, bubble lip, subtle list, midget. Borderline, schizo, sort of fine, tits, dough, porter wine, order grind. I, I just, I, I, I love, I love Madlib. Um, uh, the, the level of his creativity is amazing. And also, a lot of people would say, oh yeah, but it's samples, so he doesn't write the, it, write the stuff. And he is the most creative sampler that has, you know, someone who samples produ as a produ hip hop producer creatively. He can make an explosive tune. Out, I mean, basically, he's kind of the, the, I think he's like the hip hop Frank Zappa, really. Uh, one last record. Can I choose it? Sure. Oh, suicide. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Cool, thanks. Flat. No, it's oh, been a pleasure. You. Thank you very much. No, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Ghost Rider, Motorcycle Hero. He's a looking so cute. Sneaking round and round and round in a blue jumpsuit. Who's riding a motorcycle in a row?